Hey guys, this is Ernst once again, and today I'm going to give you guys a tour of my boat. I uh, had a request to do this from uh, Cousins Outdoors, and uh, so I'm going to take you guys through my boat and show you uh, how I've got it set up and how I fish it, and uh, let's go. Hi right, guys, uh, like I said, I'm going to take you guys through the boat tour. First off, uh, here she is. Uh, don't have a fancy boat, don't have a new boat, but uh, what this is is a 1990 model Venture Pro 180. Uh, it's 18 feet. Uh, I've got a 150 Mercury on the back of it, and uh, you know, for what I do, it suits me just great. Hi right, guys, like I said, uh, I've got a uh, 150 Merc on the back. I know the uh, cowl says 200. Uh, like I said, I bought this boat used, and when I got it, the uh, the cowl had been replaced uh, for whatever reason uh, with a 200 cowl, but it is a 150. Uh, the boat is rated for 200. So, uh, I mean, if I did have a, a 200 horsepower motor, it would be just fine, but uh, it is a 150. And uh, one thing that I did add extra on the back of it here, uh, well, a couple of things. First thing is, uh, is this Stingray. Uh, I've got a lot of weight in the back of my boat, which I'll show you guys in a minute. Uh, but I was having some trouble with getting up on plane once I did add that weight. But I added this stinger, and that really compensated for that. So uh, if you guys have a lot of weight in the back, or you, you know, you're a couple big guys, you know, I'm not the smallest guy in the world. If I got you know a couple people with me, it kind of get a little, it, it gets a little hard to get on plane. So uh, this really, really helped out a lot. Uh, also, one thing that I did get, uh, you know, I got the boat used, but um, and I got it at a really good price. Had to do some work on the interior of it, which I'll show you guys. Uh, and also, I did have to replace the lower unit on it uh, this past year. Uh, that was a little salty, but it was well worth it. It runs like a top, and I've never had any problems out of my motor. So, uh, that's the motor. Okay, guys, I kind of got a little handheld uh, <laughs> version here. Uh, what I was saying is I did add a lot of weight in the back of my boat. What I did is uh, I've only got a 24, uh, excuse me, 12 volt trolling motor. And uh, you know, it worked fine for me, but uh, I kinda, you know, about lunch I was noticing that I was really running out of juice, uh, especially if I wanted to fish all day. So what I did is I added an extra battery back here to where I can, uh, you know, if I run one battery down, I can swap over to the other and I can, you know, get a fresh battery about lunch and I can go all day long. I don't have any problems with uh, running out of battery life. One thing I also did, and you probably can't see it for all the wires back here, is I ran my cranking battery and my main trolling battery in, uh, I don't know if they call it series or parallel. I don't know. It's still, it's two batteries but it's still 12 volts. So, um, you know, if I go and, I, and, I, and I, I can run my trolling motor on high for a long time, you know, an hour or two hours maybe, and when that battery starts getting low, if I want to go run to another area, I can crank up and run, and it will charge up that battery a little bit. Now, it's not going to charge it all the way, but it will charge enough to, uh, to kind of give me a little bit longer time before I have to change over to my other battery. Uh, my sw trim switch on the back here, uh, it kind of messed up and I just kind of got it kind of, got a jerry rigged up there with some duct tape, but, uh, you know, it works for me. Uh, so, uh, let's, uh, let's see the rest. Okay, in my driver's side compartment, I've got one here, one on the other side, and the, um, live well in the middle. Uh, on this side, I've got, uh, you know, just some storage. I've got my oil over here. I've got my anchor in here. If I get caught out at night, i got a big spotlight. If I, on the off chance that I do fish a tournament, I do have a tournament bag. Uh, just some uh, fuel treatment, fire extinguisher. And I can put tackle back here, but uh, most of it's up front where I like it. I can get to it real, real good, real easy, real quick. So, uh, let's see gas to mix it. My, my motor is a two cycle so I do have to mix the gas and the oil. So that's that side. Okay on the other side you'll see uh, missing a handle. I've got the handle. I just haven't put it on yet. <laughs> uh, 
I've got a few little odd and end stuff. I got a button up on this thing, but uh, it, uh, you know, missing the handle. So, what I got in here, uh, I've got my bungee strap to unload the boat because most of the time I do fish by myself. Uh, little electrical components, life jacket, uh, throw cushion. You know, you got to have the stuff. And I have my onboard charger mounted uh, to the side of this. Uh, I had this originally in the back with my batteries. However, when I added that extra battery back there, it took up uh, the space for this. So I had to relocate this. Uh, my cords were long enough. I think they're six foot on my battery cables for my charger. It's a Minn Kota. And this is a great charger. The Minn Kota MKDT D10 D. 210D. I'll get it right in a minute. But two bank charger, I keep it on both of my trolling batteries because uh, you know my crank battery usually stays charged with the motor, so uh, don't have to really charge that a whole lot. And if I do, I've got those wired together so I can jump off of my uh, trolling battery to crank if I need to, and then uh, that charges it. So it's kind of kills two birds with one stone. I got both uh, batteries hooked up on the charger, so we're good to go on that. <clears throat> okay guys, in the middle here, uh, I have a massive, and I mean massive, I've got a big live well in here. I don't know how many gallons this thing is, but it's huge. I can stick a lot of fish in here. Uh, you know, if I fish a team tournament, or if I had a co-angler, if I wanted to fish a boater and a co-angler, I would have plenty of room to do that. Um, you guys can see I've got my hanging system for my cold tabs. Uh, I'll put a link above and also in the description to these coil tags um, you know I mentioned in that video that I might have to shorten these up and I did these kind of got tangled up a little bit so what I've did is I've shortened these up a little bit so that they won't get tangled up uh, and it just makes it a real uh, a lot cleaner and a lot neater so uh, I put that link above and in the description if you guys uh, want to check that out I appreciate it okay guys uh, on the passenger side, I've got a uh, little storage bin right here. If I can get it open. And in here, I've got just a lot of miscellaneous stuff. My bag for my cameras, cord for my cameras. I've got some sunscreen, poncho, umbrella, some buffs, uh, some wet wipes, bug spray, all my camera stuff. You know, duct tape, you can't go anywhere without that. So. Uh, just a lot of odd and end stuff. Um, when I have my wife with me, this is her box, and I have to take all my stuff out, and she puts her purse here. So, guys, if you have a wife and you take with them, it's a very handy little box to have. Okay, guys, obviously these are the seats. Uh, they're a little dirty right now. i got to wipe them off. But uh, last year, I redone my boat completely when I got it. And with new carpet and new seats, and the seats I got from uh, BassBoatSeats.com. I got a really, really good deal on these. The color really matched uh, the paint on my boat with my carpet, really good. Fold down seats, I've got three of them here. Uh, really durable seats. I really have no complaints about these seats. I love them. So if you guys are in the market for some seats, uh, check out BassBoatSeats.com and uh, those guys can hook you up with some good seats. Okay, guys, also uh, above the compartment there on the passenger side is my rod box. And I love this rod box. It's really good. I usually carry about 12 rods with me or so on a given day. And, uh, you know, I've got plenty of room over here. Uh, a lot of storage. I can probably fit, you know, five or six more rods in here if I needed to. Also got, uh, you know, I got a paddle in here. Got my lights. Uh, a bump board, paddle, more lights. So a uh, very good live with a uh, rod box here. You know, I, I have had boats without a rod box, and I can tell you this is, in, you know, one of the best things in the world for in a boat. If you're looking for an older boat, make sure it's got a rod box. Uh, you know, that's one thing. You know, if you got nothing else, have a rod box. You know, because I broke so many rods just laying around. So uh, there you go. Okay, guys, let's get into the front deck. <clears throat> now, one thing that I, uh, you know, this is a 1990 model boat. 
and most boats made back then, this is just an 18 foot boat. It's, it's not a, you know, super fancy boat from back then. Um, the majority of the boats that I've seen from there, the deck only comes to, you know, the front deck. It's got a very, very short front deck on most of the boats uh, from this year and prior. Uh, when I was looking for a boat, the one thing that I wanted was a big front deck. This boat in particular, and I've not seen many like this, or any really, uh, with the age of this boat, uh, this has a removable deck, extra deck extension. Um, you know, I can take this uh, from here to here. I can take out if I want to. I don't want to. But, uh, you know, when I was redoing the boat, you can see I've got all new carpet on here, which I've done myself, new latches. Uh, but that was a real selling point for me when I got this boat was this big, massive front deck because I'm clumsy. And if it was a short deck back up there, I'd fall. I'm just going to be honest. But uh, also, the reason that I love this extended deck is I've got room for all of my tackle. It's a little messy right now, but I've got big boxes. I've got regular Plano boxes, the big ones, spinnerbait boxes, buzzbait boxes, duffel bags. I can fit so much space under here, and I've still got some room for some more. But you know, being anglers, it's gonna get cramped full of stuff for long anyways. But, you know, the, the bottom of it looks just like it would, uh, you know, had regular uh, boats of this style, you know, you got a little compartment over there and this big empty space here. But with this uh, deck extender, I guess that's what you call it, I can fit all of my stuff in here. And I don't even have a tackle box anymore. Like, if, you know, if a buddy calls me and says, hey, let's go fishing, I'm like, we got to take my boat because I don't have a tackle box. All my tackle is right here and I can keep it. I can keep it neatly and I can keep it organized and it's right where I need it. So uh, that was a really big selling point on uh, when I was looking for a boat was this big deck extension. I wanted as much storage space as I could. So uh, here you go. Okay guys, moving up front. I do have another live well up here. I don't use it uh, because I think that, you know, if you have fish up here a lot and you get in a lot of rough water, which I kind of get cold in from time to time, just the slapping of this is, is really not good for the fish if you've got any in the box that you're needing. You know, if I wanted to separate my fish, I could. I've got the extra live well up here, but uh, I really don't use it. I've got some cords in there, some rope in case I, you know, a breakdown or somebody breaks down, I need to tow them. So, uh, I got that, really don't use it. Uh, got some straps here, put on both sides, holds my rods down real good. Um, but uh, one thing that this boat did not come with, and boats of this age don't come with, is a recessed trolling motor tray. Now, I put this on myself um, a year or so ago, and I can tell you it's been one of the best things I've done. It really helps my back out just a tremendous amount. Standing on one foot after a day of fishing, my back and my legs would really bother me. But uh, now I can stand up all day without my seat up here. If I, if I want to put it up here, I can. But without it, I can stand up comfortable all day long. So uh, let's get to some electronics. Okay, guys, getting to the cockpit. Uh, got all my gauges here, of course, you know, trim, tilt. I uh, got a cord tie off of and a uh, light to, uh, you know, start. But as far as electronics go, uh, when I got here at the, uh, at the console, it's a Hummingbird 598 uh, HD side imaging, and I love this thing. Uh, I'm running the uh, Lake Master, I think it's version 3, the southeast version, and uh, for where I fish at, this gives me really good detail on, uh, on all the contour lakes that I go to, including the waterway sections. And what I mean by waterway sections is anything south of Pickwick and Bay Springs. If you go down those canal sections, uh, that Lake Master chip really gives you that detail uh, to where some of the other ones don't. So uh, I really love that Lake Master. I really love my hummingbirds. And uh, hopefully I'll get to upgrade here soon. Okay, at the, uh, compared to business end things, we've got the Hummingbird 561 sonar. 
Uh, it's just 2D. It doesn't have any mapping on it, and it's it's just black and white. It's not color like the other one. Uh, but I really like it. I mean, it's done good for me. I, I've learned to drop shot using it where I could adjust the settings to where I need it to be. Uh, so I really like it. Uh, trolling motor is a 55 pound Minn Kota. Love the Minn Kota. Uh, like I said, it's 12 volt. And I've got two batteries in the back. And this just, you know, all day long I can go. Uh, I can run it on high if I need to. Or most time I've got it on about four. Uh, so I really love my Minn Kota. Really tough trolling motor, really tough. Uh, now, my secret weapon. I don't know if it's a secret weapon or not. It's not secret anymore, but let me bring it over here. And that's this booger. The Hydrowave H2. I really, really love this thing. Uh, you guys can see in a previous video uh, where I had a uh, the Mini. And I used it for about, uh, I don't know, nine months or so. And I was really impressed with it, and it, I think it did help me catch fish. And, uh, you know, I don't have fancy electronics and everything on my boat. I'm primarily a shallow water guy anyways. But uh, I did invest in this Hydrowave, and I think that it has uh, helped me catch fish. So, uh, love that. Still getting used to all the settings on it and what all it can do. Uh, it's got a ton of settings, delay on it. Really getting used to it and really, really enjoying it. All right, guys, so that's my boat. Uh, you know, she ain't fancy, but she's mine, and I love her to death. So uh, thanks to Cousins Outdoors for requesting this video. I thought about doing it for a while, but I thought, well, I'll just you know, see if anybody wants to see it. And they did request it, so uh, I was happy to oblige those guys. Um, as always, guys, I thank you guys so much for the support you've given me. Uh, please subscribe to this channel. It does help me out. I know I post a lot on... Uh, <clears throat> when I when I get videos, I post them a lot on different groups on Facebook. But uh, I do appreciate you guys. If you would subscribe, it helps me out. Hit that thumbs up button. Uh, again, thank you guys so much, and uh, we'll see you down the road.